a story where um, the situation, and we don't need names, but you have a story where situation seemed, you know, very, very doomed, but you were able to deliver at the end. Do you have a, like, a, a good success story to tell us? There are so many different ways I'm of sure. looking at it. Um, <laughs> but you have one. Well, only only one. one. Okay. One of the first ones to come to mind. Yeah, go ahead. Was Curious. a building downtown Manhattan. Okay. They put a generator on the roof. Typical generators go on roofs all okay. the time. Uh huh. Okay. Except the fuel lines to feed the fener- to feed the generator will run through the exit stair. Let's ah. see. Pumping diesel fuel through an exit <laughs> stair, that generally is not a good idea. <laughs> this doesn't sound very safe to me. <laughs> no. And I'm not even in your field. And we're talking a 20-something story building. Even better. Um, <laughs> the architect who I was working with at the time, I called him, didn't answer, I called him, did, I called him four or five times. He finally picks up the phone because he happened to be at Passover dinner. Uh, <laughs> and I told him what was going on. All I got was dead silence, then the, oh my God. All right, Chase, what do you got? There's one great thing here in this clip, and he, it's him giving the reason that his call wasn't answered. He wanted to make sure that you knew it's definitely not because he was being ignored. No possible way. He was doing something religious, which is excusable for not answering the call. Pay attention to that. And if you've subscribed for any length of time to the channel, then you've probably by now identified his GHT or gestural hemispheric tendency. Negative things on one side, positive things on the other side. So that's kind of like we tend to gesture one way for negative things and one way for positive things. If if you want to try it out, ask somebody about like maybe an ex-husband or something that somebody doesn't like, and they'll start doing this while they're talking and then ask them about the last vacation they took that they loved. And they'll be like, oh, it was amazing. They'll start using another hand or gesturing to a different side. So his right side is positive, his left side is negative. And you can use this GHT positive negative thing in any situation to maybe frame an idea how you want somebody to perceive it. And you can also see if someone's talking about something positively, but you see them start using the negative side, you might need to ask some more questions. Uh, The next indicator here, I'll just go ahead and keep talking about these. There's an interest in violent media, which Apparently, according to the investigators, this guy very much was uh, interested in this stuff. Uh, Violent adult uh, movies is from what I understand. And we're not teaching you how to spot a psychopath. We're teaching you how to spot some red flags that should come into a pile before you make any kind of conclusion. And once these things pile up, that's a big deal. And you'll notice that one more thing that you're seeing here in his stories if you you've probably got a friend that does this this doesn't make him a psychopath this is just one of those things that builds the mountain is they know that you want to hear the very detailed part of a story but they withhold it and they keep talking to you and they keep talking around that knowing that they'll eventually get to it but you'll see them deliberately withholding the ending the punchline of stories you're seeing that here too scott what do you got all right This is the perfect question for a narcissist. It's a perfect question for a psychopath if he was a psychopath, because it's it's this. Tell me the best story, your best hero story where you were the hero. Let me hear that one. And let me tell you, I don't I was never in war, so I don't know about war stories. But this cat, he's got so many of these. He has to go through and think about which one he wants to tell for this specific situation. This is perfect for him. He's got the camera on him. He's already got this guy submissive. He's he he knows where he's sitting in the situation. And now tell me about you being a hero. Oh, it's Nirvana for one of those things, man. Unbelievable. So I think that's we see him at his at his best here. I think we're it doesn't get any better for a narcissist than this. So nothing shows he's a psychopath. However, all psychopaths are narcissists, but not all narcissists are psychopaths. It's extremely important to remember that because you can't just sometimes it takes a year, a year and a half to identify the uh, psych, psychopathy in someone, a, a true psychopath or what is terms as a psychopath. 
So, and it could, and you do that quite often from using the fMRI on the, uh, looking at their brain and see how, how it, uh, how it's functioning, see what is and isn't functioning in there. And we're, we're not going to go through for the millionth time, the specifics of that. But in this case, it's, I'll bet you this guy had a dopamine dump like you've never seen before. This has got to be just the ultimate for him. Tell me about what a great hero, the, your best hero story, man. Let me hear that. And then he just starts telling it. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, let's first talk about, let's say he's a nobody. Right? A nobody who is the king of the nobodies still has a story to tell. And any person you're talking to, I, I share this with Pyle. I talk to everybody I come in contact with because who knows what they know? You don't know. A person who lives under a bridge might know when you know crime occurs, that kind of thing. So they can tell me something I don't know. I'm always willing to listen. I've been in buildings forever and I've learned a whole lot of stuff by asking guys like this questions. But this guy's not giving you anything of value because what he just told you, look, anybody could do it. I agree with you, Chase. It was a big deal for him to do, big enough deal that he goes into what, Scott, you brought up, the teacher face. After he says it was passed. I learned that I learned that from you. You re- I've talked about it on here before. You remember that. See yeah, I just guy. don't bring it up very often because like, you don't see it. This guy's yeah. teaching. But a guy, I'd gotten a video of a guy was, that I'd been asked to look at and say, "What's up with this cat?" And I saw this, and I said, "I said, what is this? I don't, I don't under, I, why is this so odd? Because I'd never seen it. I'm sure I had, but didn't, didn't realize what I was seeing. But I said it to you, I said, "Aha, I've got it. Here's what it is: it's a teaching face." And I was like, oh, "That's my what God, this, this guy's is, doing. It is exactly what it was." Sorry to mean to interrupt you, there, dude. Well, you see, he's just waiting for your approval when he tells you that. Oh, yeah. so. He was at Passover's reason he didn't talk to you. Oh, you're, he wouldn't have simply avoided you, Chase. I think that's the most brilliant call of the whole thing is he's showing us how important he is. And look, a minion, a guy who is nobody, who's figured out how to way make himself somebody, he's going to be proud of whatever he does. We all are proud of what we do. It's simply a matter of letting the person talk. And even if they know that they're not a big deal, he's being interviewed by this guy for some reason. Somebody has said, hey, go talk to Rex. Rex has not been talked to a lot in video. If he had, I would have found it, trust me, because I dug and dug and dug and dug. I spent hours looking for anything else he might have done in front of the camera. The only other thing he's done in front of the camera is get arrested. Go look it up. It's pretty good. You see this bunch of cops just swarm him like bees and take him down. He's also, they say he's imposing. He's a big shambling kind of guy. I wouldn't say imposing. He's big. I think he's about 6'4", but he's really out of shape. You see him walking, he kind of waddles. So he's not like... A real physical looking guy. So again, one of those things that you might put aside and say it is. Anyway, long story short, there are a couple of things he does with that teaching face. He he his illustrators are on because he's telling Mark to your point. This is his, or maybe it was you, Scott. This is his hero story. He's telling his story. His hands are everywhere. This is his moment to shine. Would you be able to tell that he's a psychopath? Don't know if he's a psychopath. Would you be able to tell he's a serial killer? You hit it, Chase. They found a whole bunch of violent sexual reference and that kind of thing. But nobody goes, hey, look what I watch. So we won't know that. We have to look for symptoms. Mark, what do you got? Oh, Greg, you know, I have so much. I have so many things that I could I could say. It's, it's just so hard to to pick on just one for you. I mean, so it is apart from, you know. But was it Passover? <laughs> yeah, that's a classic case of grandiosity here. Uh, it's a great question from the interview. The interviewer says, you know, yeah, yeah. what is your top one? So it's, it's a value question. Which one do you value most? Which is top of the hierarchy for you? What he does with that is to go, there, is, there are everything is of value. Everything is top of the hierarchy. Let me pick from, from the top of the hierarchy. Now, I think there are two elements of that that make that narcissistic. One is to be grandiose, to blow it up. There are so many, but also to try and avoid the fact that none of them might have value. None of none of what he says, his fear that none of what he says has any value whatsoever. And I think we'll come in a, in a couple of videos time as to why that might be for him, that he might worry that what he has is of 
very little value. Uh, Chase, to your point about the the hemispheres, I'm not going to pick up on that, but just on the on on the gestures on a whole. Look out for the hemispheres, as Chase was saying, but also look out for his methodical, structured uh, illustrators, and we'll see some more of those later on where he boxes elements in. So look out for structure, and then look out for where he's being, uh, shall we say, flourishing, florid. Uh, more um, uh, less structured with his gestures. I think he likes, he enjoys, he feels safe in structured stories, but he wants to come across as a florid raconteur, somebody who can tell an effusive, um, uh, uh, beautiful story for people, like, like maybe a beautiful piece of French furniture, something of a more artistic nature when really the reality is, is he's a bureaucrat. And that's another thing to look out for, uh, is the bureaucrat. Because, because if there is a sociopath here and a psychopath here, the last thing you ever want those people in charge of is the bureaucracy that runs people that has command over people's lives because that's incredibly dangerous that he's just looking after a bit of code well we'll see in some of his stories it's a bit dodgy what goes on there because he's not really paying attention to the lives of people but imagine if he was in charge of people's lives that kind of bureaucracy that that can be a a big problem for for countries and humanity as a whole there that's all i got on this one mark yeah robert hare wrote a book about that called snakes in suits specifically about what you're talking about about the bureaucracy and psychopaths how they get into companies and what happens there if you are interested in that kind of thing look up robert hare h-a-r-e and it's called snakes in suits excellent book one of those tape replays a story where um <sighs> The situation, and we don't need names, but you have a story where situation seemed, you know, very, very doomed, but you were able to deliver at the end. Do you have a, like, a, a good success story to tell us? There are so many different ways. I'm of sure. Looking at it. Um, <laughs> but you have one. Well, only need only one. one. Okay. One of the first ones to come to mind. Yeah, go ahead. Was curious. a building downtown Manhattan. Okay. They put a generator on the roof. Typical, generators go on roofs all okay. the time. Uh -huh, okay. Except the fuel lines to feed the, fener to feed the generator will run through the exit stair. Let's ah. see, <laughs> pumping diesel fuel through an exit stair, that generally is not a good idea. <laughs> Does that sound very safe to me? <laughs> no. And I'm not even in your field. And we're talking a 20-something story building. Even better. Um, <laughs> The architect who I was working with at the time, I called him, didn't answer, I called him, did, I called him four or five times. He finally picks up the phone because he happened to be at Passover dinner. Uh. And I told him what was going on. All I got was dead silence, then the, oh my God. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.